Hey everybody and welcome back to another quick time. My name is Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Bobber Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. And we want to thank uh, Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School for bringing you this quick tie tonight. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Hit that little bell icon, it'll notify you again next week when we have a couple more flies coming your way. Today we were tying an intruder pattern. So this is kind of our first, uh, that's the wrong one, Dana. <laughs> this is the intruder leech, okay? So this is actually a really good introduction to tying some intruder type patterns. Um, and give you a little bit of a, a brief look at what that looks like. So um, we're excited to go through this with you tonight. It's actually a fairly simple pattern um, and we'll we'll just kind of show you the, the ropes on that. So I'm tying out of my season six kit. Looks like this. If you're tying out of this as well, go ahead and grab your um, season six episode 12 package that's got the leech in it. If you're tying out of our individual kits, just go ahead and grab it because it's going to be uh, labeled as this fly. Um, and if you don't have any of our kits, that's fine as well. Just head over to our website. There'll be a full fly recipe there for you. Um, so you can just tie along with your own materials. Okay, let's head on over to the vise and let's get this guy started. This is our intruder leech. So um, as you can see, we have a hook that's trailed behind it. We, d we are actually tying the front portion on a hook today, but you could also use a, uh, a shank but what we're gonna do at the end is we're actually just cutting the hook bend off this. It just is a kind of a nice little way for um, to tie without a shank. It just allows you to tie on that hook and then we'll cut off the bend later. So this is what it's gonna look like. Only a couple materials, but a couple of kind of cool little ways and tricks of tying in some of these materials to get that real buggy looking head um, and so forth. Okay, let's get to it. We'll get that one out of the vise. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to put in this large sized silver hook with the really big um, hook eye in it. So let's go ahead and get that guy fixed in the vise. Now I am tying with some UTC 140 in brown today. It just kind of matches the pattern and, and it's dark and it's a little thicker because it's easier to bind down some of those bigger materials. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, start my thread just behind the eye. I'm going to work on laying a bit of a thread base down. You can either break out that tag end or cut it out. Take your thread all the way down to just before that bend. Now everything we tie in on this fly is gonna be tied in in between where my thread is right now and the hook eye. So we don't need a ton of space to do it, just where everything's gonna go in. So from here, what I want you to do is go ahead and grab out of your kit. We have some bead chain eyes, just like this. Okay, we're gonna tie those guys in um, just as if they were dumbbell eyes. We're gonna tie them in um, just behind the eye of the hook. We're gonna leave maybe just a tiny bit of space in front of them. We're not gonna overdo leaving a bunch of space. So just do a kind of a cross wrap to get them started up on top. And then as always, we need to go back and forth. We need to do some binding wraps in each direction. We need to do some figure eights. We need to do a whole series of wraps that uh, encompass sometimes just the hook shank itself, sometimes just the eyes themselves. Just do a whole combination. If you've been following along this year, you've probably got your own system at this point of how you like tying in dumbbell eyes or bead chain eyes. I probably never do it the same way twice, but what I do know is once I grab on them and they seem pretty firm, I'm happy with how they are, they're straight, um, we're good to go. We can move on from that point. So I've left just a little bit of space in front of them, like I said. What I do like to do though, especially these bead chain eyes because the binding material between is so small, I just like to put just a drop of some super glue right between the eyes that'll dry as we finished kind of tying through this fly and really help secure those eyes. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our rear hook placed properly. So in your kit, you're gonna see you have a whole bunch of this heavy mono. Um, you could be using uh, braid as well, like a 30 pound braid or a 20 pound mono um, to attach this rear hook. We're going with the mono version this time. So we're gonna go to that rear hook, which is uh, an intruder style hook. Okay, so when I, these in our kit here, um, the hooks that were in here originally, I'll show you what this looks like, is a straight eye, okay? So all I've done is I've placed that in my vise and I've bent the eye up to get the proper angle. Now the only reason I've done that is I'll show you how this is supposed to sit. So going back to the one that I've bent, you can see with that upturned eye now, I'm gonna take both tips of this mono and I'm gonna come in from the back side of that hook, pull both of them through. So I'm left with a loop on one end, okay? Then I wanna push, make sure you don't let that fall off that end. I'm gonna take that hook and I'm gonna push it up through the loop. 
and then grab and pull. So the beauty of that with an upturn eye is that once you get this set, that should sit basically perfectly level. It's like, they call it the handshake knot. So when you, it's like shaking a hand, it's the hook and it's the, it's the mono comes together. It does that kind of handshake and it sits perfectly straight. Okay, so how am I gonna tie this in now? Well, knowing that I'm gonna cut the hook bend off somewhere right in here, I want this leech to basically be twice the length of the portion I'm tying on. So if I'm tying on this portion, I'm just gonna double it and hang that out the back. It's not super critical that it's an exact science, but we will cut the next uh, material to match in size. So if I say about there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch down that mono into the middle of that hook shank, and I'm gonna start taking some thread wraps. Okay, this is what's gonna bind this two pieces of hook together. Making sure that that hook is pointed down as I'm tying it in. Take that all the way back, and then back forward right up against the bead chain eyes. Before I go over top of them, I wanna take both of these tips and push them down through the eye of the hook. This is where you're really gonna get that extra strength and hopefully this will not be able to slip out if you've done it properly. So then I brought my thread in front of the bead chain eyes, really working that down, securing it. And then I'm gonna fold that for the last part. I'm gonna fold it right up underneath here and again, pass behind the bead chain eyes and really work that in. And now if that's gonna stick out past that hook bend, I'll come in here and I'll just trim it out. You can get underneath it. Just like so. And just make sure I've got the butt ends of that covered up with thread. Okay, perfect. So I think we're just about ready for our first material now. That's what I should be left with. I've got my hook sitting back here, okay? So when that's getting pulled, that handshake knot is pulling it tight. And the reason we've left that extra space is because if I ever needed to change that hook, all I gotta do is take the pressure off of it and I would be able to slide this hook back off of that loop and I could change the hook if I needed to. Can't imagine why you would need to, but that is how that works. Okay, let's go to our next material. So we have some chartreuse green kind of like laser dub material. So it's quite long fibers. So what I want you to do is pull out a piece of it, do your best to stack it. So that just means kind of pull out a couple pieces, pull it out again, keep stacking on top of itself. Then what I want you to do is go in there with your scissors and I want you to cut it into three different lengths. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna cut once, I'm gonna move down, and twice, that's gonna make three equal portions of that full length. That's what we're gonna spin into a dubbing loop. So I'm just gonna take this away from here and lay it in my dish. So I've cut one. It's basically just like a long dubbing. So now that's straight, I'm gonna cut it again. This will all get spun up. And now that's left me with basically three pieces. So when I bring this back up to show you, the fibers themselves are a lot shorter. And if I restack it again, it's kind of a more appropriate size for this fly, okay? Something like that. This is probably a little bit too much for this fly, but that's okay. I'm just gonna set that back in my dish as I prepare my dubbing loop. So making my dubbing loop, I'm gonna place two fingers on my thread. I'm gonna pull down, bring my bobbin up and over the hook shank, lay it on top, do a couple thread wraps, okay? That's gonna keep it from moving in place. And then I need to hold with my fingers, hold that loop, okay? You can see it's a loop. I'm gonna toss my bobbin over my fingers once, twice then bring back to the hook shank and go around the hook shank again. Now that loop can't move up or down the hook, okay? And I always wanna make sure I keep my fingers in here kind of bracing that loop itself. And then I'm also gonna need my dubbing spinner, okay? So whatever brand you have, whatever it looks like, I'm using the Loon one. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and just get my hook placed in that. I like to keep my fingers in here normally until I get my materials in, then I will take my fingers out. So I'm gonna go over to that material that I prepared, I probably prepared enough to do about three flies. I'm gonna grab a good clump of it. I'm gonna come in here. I placed it between the two pieces in that loop. I'm gonna set it down and then I'm just gonna spread it out a little bit. So I've got probably about an inch and a half worth of this dubbing material. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my finger um, right on the, the loop so it's closed. I'm gonna place it right here and I'm gonna spin 
my dubbing spinner and I'm gonna let that all cord up and get nice and tight. Give it another spin. If you overspin, what you will do is you'll actually end up breaking your thread. So you gotta be careful not to do that. But once you get it so it's corded up really nice, you're still gonna have some of those longer fibers, which we like. Um, we just don't want any that, if you got a few that are like twice the length of other ones, that just means that they didn't get trimmed properly. Let's go ahead and trim those out before we start wrapping. And then as I start to wrap here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of stroke the material rearward in one direction. So as I come through here, I'm gonna wet my fingers, pull that material back. Okay, you can see how it folds. Now we're just gonna start palmering this forward. Every time I come around, I'm gonna pull it rearward. Now we're gonna start working this forward, just open spiraled wraps. This is gonna be almost like a hot spot on this, on this leech. It's gonna work out just perfect. I'm gonna run out of my material, leaving myself a bit of space behind those eyes. And then just treat this dubbing loop like it was another material you tied in. So I'm just gonna keep a hand on my dubbing spinner. I'm gonna make sure I get my thread behind it. Do a wrap behind, a wrap in front. And that's gonna secure that and that material that's been secured in that loop. Go ahead and trim that out. Now I've got this nice material, it's all set. Bring a couple of thread wraps back up against it. Now we're gonna move over to our zonker material. Okay, so we're, this, this one's like a tan, a barred tan color. That's what we're working with today. It's a nice looking color. What we're gonna do with this now is we're gonna <clears throat> cut our long tail piece. So we need to kind of match the length and get the right size here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to the back end of it. I want that to extend just beyond that rear hook. So that rear hook bend you can see right there. I'm basically gonna set the fur portion that's on the underside that fur portion right there, you can see, I'm gonna set that right at the bend of that rear hook, just as a rough gauge to where my thread is. I'm gonna pull apart up here at the front. I've marked it. So then I'm gonna come in here like this. I'm gonna spread it out. And I'm gonna make a cut right down at the, the leather portion at the bottom. Now I should roughly have pretty close to the length that I want. So I'm gonna double check it. I laid it there. Yeah, that's gonna be perfect. So I'm then gonna pull just a little bit of that fur off at the very tip, of that leather piece, exposing just a little bit of it. And that's gonna be my tie-in point. So I'm gonna come and lay that just in front of where that dubbing was. Make sure I get a good thread wrap over top of it, cinch it down and secure it in place. Just like that. Make sure you get a good amount of thread wrap so it's gonna even that out like a little ramp. And there we go. It should be back to that length. Look on the underside, we've got our hot spot. We're happy with that. Length is good. Okay. Now the last part of this fly is we need to take some more of this zonker and we're actually gonna make another dubbing loop with just the material of the zonker itself because it's obviously too wide to palmer up such a small space but we want to have a nice looking buggy head like we had on this guy here so how did i create that head well i'm actually using that same fur cutting it off kind of stacking it a little bit in my fingers and then putting it in, a, in another dubbing noodle okay or a dubbing uh, loop so i'm gonna come grab this guy here i'm gonna kind of separate and pull some of those pieces up off of that leather. So as you can see right there, I would come in and I'm gonna cut it nice and close to that leather, catch it in my hand. The material itself does like to stay together. Okay, so like that. I'm gonna take that piece and just set it down in my dish. I'm gonna come and grab a little bit more. You don't need a whole lot of it off here, but I'm gonna come trim another section of it. So I'll come trim that off. Again, it stacks together quite nicely. Set that with your other ones. The thing when you when you work with this material is it doesn't really have to be like super even because once we put it in that dubbing noodle, it's all gonna change anyways. That should be plenty. So I can discard that part. So what I've been left with, is I'll clump it all together, is basically that clump of fur that's come off there. The tips are to one side and I got the under fur over here, which I'm gonna leave in there. I'm not gonna try to take it out. It's gonna set that aside for now. I'm gonna come in here and make another one of those dubbing loops. Dubbing loops, sorry. So I'm gonna come up right to where I left that fur. Again, two fingers on top. 
fold my bobbin over top, do a couple of wraps just on the hook shank, then toss that bobbin over my fingers two or three times, then again, just over around the hook shank. And then I'm gonna move this forward, hop in front of those bead chain eyes, and I'm gonna leave, do a little half hitch right there with my bobbin and leave my thread up out of the way because I'm not gonna need it here for a minute. Then again, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna hook my dubbing spinner inside here. Um, if you have some dubbing wax, this isn't a terrible time to use it. Um, it'll bind a little nicer to this um, type of material because it's not a synthetic. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of my Wopsy um, dubbing wax. I'm just gonna do just a little touch on my thread. I don't want any excessive globs or anything on there, just enough to create a little bit of tackiness. And then I'm gonna go and grab some of that, that fur that I took off the zonker. And I'm gonna come in here like this, pick a direction to put it in, set it and just kind of spread it out the best you can on that uh, dubbing loop. I'm gonna grab the other bottom portion of it. Then I'm gonna close up my thread. So I'm left with something that looks kind of like this. At this point, before I start spinning it, I can always come in here and try to spread it out a little bit, make it a little bit more even. There we go, and I'm trying to pull it so that just the butts are what's hanging out the back end of my dubbing loop here. And then I'm gonna come in here with my scissors and just trim out some of that really thick butts. So what I'm left with is something that looks kind of like that. Okay, now from this point, I can go ahead and spin it. So I'm gonna, just like before, place my finger on the thread, spin that up. Let it spin up one more time. This is what I should be left with. I am gonna go in here with my dubbing brush or a piece of Velcro, like on this uh, nice shore tool. I'm just gonna brush it up, kind of make those fibers stand up a little bit. It'll also get rid of some of that under fur. I should be left with something that looks like this. Looks very wild, kind of natural. I'm gonna wet my fingers and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna stroke all of that fiber into one direction. Man, I've said it like 10 times in this tie. Then I'm gonna start wrapping this forward making sure on every wrap, I pull that material rearward. Just gonna work our way right up behind those bead chain eyes. And once I get to them, I'm gonna cross over in front. And I should have enough to maybe do one simple wrap right there. We don't need a ton of material in front of those um, eyes. We're just leaving that as our tie out, tie -out point. So I'm gonna Again, secure my dubbing loop. I can come in here and trim out my thread. Or trim out my, uh, sorry, dubbing loop thread. And then I'm gonna come in here and whip finish. So I'm gonna go ahead, you can use a whip finish or you could also do a half hitch, whatever you prefer. I am gonna whip finish on this one. So a three or four turn whip finish. Secure that, do one more. Now that, like I said, all that, putting that kind of <clears throat> natural material in a in a dubbing loop does make for quite a wild amount of material in certain places. So I'm gonna hold back the material that I want involved in the fly and you can either trim it out, you can come in here, you can burn it out like I'm doing with my cauterizing tool. Whatever works for you, just cleaning it up, making it look a little nicer, just like so. And then I would like to see a little bit of resin put at the very front of the fly, whether it's Super glue or Sally Hansen's or even some UV resin. I'm just gonna come in here with a little dab. A little dab will do ya. And from here, only thing I wanna do, just to kinda show you how I'm gonna do it, is get that hook out of there first. So right now you can see we have two hooks. <clears throat> An intruder fly does not have a front hook, okay? It's normally just that trailer hook. So I'm gonna come in here with some pliers and actually cut out that rear hook the bend, just like that. So that is more what a natural intruder fly is gonna look like. I'll try to do a better job of holding this for you. Okay, so I've got my bare hook out the bottom. Some people can would attach the tail to the hook itself, but this will give it a lot more motion. And with that mono, it's keeping it stiff and in line with that tail at all times. Okay guys, kind of a funky wild looking pattern, but this has been one of the first intruders we've done with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and there's definitely gonna be a few more um, to come for those who love swinging uh, flies, whether it's for steelhead or trout or uh, salmon. 
Okay, guys, that has been our Intruder Leech. Okay, this is Tim here with Fly Fishing Board Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. I want to thank you for joining us for another quick tie. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe this video. Hit that bell icon. We're going to have just a couple more episodes for this uh, season coming your way. Only two more flies left after this. Okay, guys, you have a great week, and we will see you then.